Hello, I'm, uh, I'm Henry Kellerman. I'm a psychologist, psychoanalyst in private practice, and I write books. Um, this particular books, this particular book is titled "Consilience: A Consilience of Natural and Social Sciences: Colon, uh, A Memoir of Original Contributions." And I did that. I created the title that way because I've been publishing books for many years, I've published a lot of books, and I've made what I consider to be several signal contributions, original contributions. And so of all the books I've published, I've distilled and selected seven of them that I think warrant a place in this consilience book. So here we go. The first one is a compilation of nightmares, dreams, nightmares from dreams, so that a person has a dream and it turns into a nightmare. The question is, how many nightmares can there be? And the answer is there can be uh, endless numbers of nightmares. However, what I've done is created a system that categorizes them into eight basic nightmare themes, so that no matter what the person's nightmare, I can identify it as one of the eight categories, as part of one of the eight categories. And once I did that, I um, began to accumulate samples of, of, of nightmares that would illustrate that point. Uh, then it became clear that my work on emotions and personality over the decades um, led me to see that these nightmare categories were also related to basic constituents of emotions and personality. And so I published a book about that many years ago which was, I think, a signal contribution, in my opinion, that showed the connection between various levels of personality, specifically divided into categories, diagnoses, uh, basic emotions, personality traits, and various levels of the personality, like impulses and controls and defense mechanisms as well. Uh, so that's one component of this consilience book. Consilience meaning unity. It's a, it's a term that was used by, um, I can't think of his name right now, but Wilson at Harvard in his consilience book, and he got the term from Wheeler in the probably mid-18th century uh, book by Wheeler. The second contribution was related to my group therapy work and my published book on group psychotherapy when it occurred to me that, of course, the group sits in a circle. However, is the actual shape of the group a circle, or is it only an apparent shape? No, and, and if that's the case, could there be implications if it's not the actual shape of the group, if the circle is not the actual shape? And so I thought that, no, the circle is not the actual shape. Now, how did I come to that conclusion? I came to that conclusion because as we said, the patients are sitting around a circle, each person has a different diagnosis. If of the eight people sitting around in a circle, let's assume there are eight people ideally in a group, a psychotherapy, a psychodynamic group, if each one has exactly the same diagnosis with exactly the same severity of diagnosis, then their weightedness would be the same all around the circle. Each person would have the same weightedness of conflict around the circle, and therefore we'd have a circle. But are all the members exactly the same around the circle? The answer, of course, is they're not. So that if you have a person who's passive in the group and another person who's extremely angry and aggressive, that is not a balance. It's a seesaw where one's up in the air and one is down on the ground. So therefore, if there are different diagnoses in the group, how might we, how, how might we how might we transfer or learn how to transform this apparent group circular shape into an actual one? And after we do that, what would that shape be? And after we see what that shape would be, what are the implications, both with respect to the physical shape itself and with respect to the psychodynamic, psychotherapeutic implication? And so I went ahead and derived ways of identifying the diagnoses of each member of the group and did so in terms of the weightedness of each diagnosis with respect to conflict. 
and then went ahead and utilized a emotions index that I and Robert Kluchik developed uh, in the mid 70s, 1970s, published by Western Psychological Services called the Emotions Profile Index, which yields a formula and a mathematical way of translating diagnostic weightedness into uh, quantities that can be inserted in a formula, in a mathematical formula. And then I use that to translate these various quantities of conflict in each diagnosis into a way of, tra of, of transforming the actual, the apparent group shape into the actual group shape. And that turned out to be a hyperbolic paraboloid. And so what I did was I went to the Courant Institute of Physical Sciences at NYU and spoke to some physicists and mathematicians there regarding what implications do we derive from util utilization of a hyperbolic paraboloid. And anyway, when you translate these, these weightednesses of each diagnostic uh, uh, individual in a group, you, and you get the actual hyperbolic paraboloid shape of the group, you could actually locate each member in the space, in the, in the room. You can actually locate them differently. So rather than each person sitting around in a circle equidistant to one another, now we get a person sitting on top of the, near the ceiling on the left side of the room, someone sitting on the other side of the room near the floor, and we see how that operates. And then we can see which diagnoses are on the ceiling and which are on the floor and what does it mean. So that was the second signal contribution I felt was worth in, including in this conciliance book. I'm not sure if I made that clear, but we'll go, let me continue. <clears throat> then I had the idea that in the work with uh, emotion theory derived by Pluchik, known as the psychoevolutionary theory of emotion, Pluchik derived eight basic emotions and they were based on prototype behavioral categories. So for example, the behavioral prototype category of incorporation turns out in higher order species to be the emotion of acceptance. The behavioral category of rejection, which is the opposite, turns out to be the emotional category of disgust or ejection or revulsion. That's just an example, a couple of examples. And so um, I thought that the DNA model has four bases, constituents, uh, that carry all the hereditary information. <coughs> And the number four interested me because it's related to the number eight in a very specific way. And we know that Gelman's, phys the physicist Nobel Prize guy Gelman uh, had the eightfold way and in Buddhism we know there's an eightfold path and so forth and so on. So it occurred to me that isn't it interesting that there are four bases and eight primary emotions? Is it possible? And not only is it possible, but would it be far-fetched? It would not be far-fetched to assume that in the DNA model that we have, in our DNA, are properties related to basic emotions. And so I went ahead and wrote a chapter for this book where I suggested which emotions are imprinted in basic DNA bases, constituents and suggested also that since the sugar phosphate is attached to the backbone there, that would be related to the id, excitement. The phosphate attached to the sugar would be related to the superego. And then when I, when I analyzed that with respect to the basic emotions that I think are involved in these DNA constituents of bases, we could see which ones were superego and which ones were id. So even though that's a little abstract right now, the chapter explains it much better. <coughs> Excuse me. So that was the third, uh, <coughs> what I felt was a signal, perhaps a signal contribution. Then I published a book in the, in the, I think it was 2007 or 2008, entitled The Psychoanalysis of Symptoms, which was the first time in the history of the psychoanalytic, psychological, psychiatric literature that a specific set of axioms were developed to cure, yes, I said cure, 
a certain class of psychological symptoms. What kind of symptoms? Obsessions, compulsions, phobias, panic attacks, intrusive thoughts, and so forth. And this book provides a step-by-step -step procedure to unravel the symptom and get to the core of it and cure it. And that book is called The Psychoanalysis of Symptoms. It's published by Springer Science. A corresponding book is called The Four Steps to Peace of Mind, The Simple Effective Way to Cure Our Psycho-Emotional Symptoms, which is published by Prager Publishing, which is the layman's version of that particular work. And that's the fourth contribution I think I've made.